So on the bench this evening is this <coughs> little IMG Stage Line STA 500 stereo amplifier, small PA amp, little dinky transformer, like modular heatsink. It's got parallel output transistors. Uh, it's the uh, I'm not taking all that apart to see what's underneath there. Well, I might have to. Uh, I've not ascertained if that bit's working or not. Yeah, it uh, doesn't seem to be faulty. So anyway, the fault with this one was <coughs> intermittent output and I couldn't get any output out of it at all. So I've pulled this board out. This is the like this has the output relay protection circuits, uh, all the inputs and everything on it, outputs, power supply capacitors. <coughs> um, yeah it was just basically in there. So, anyway, powering it up, measuring the output on each of the amps, on the output leads and where they plug into this board, getting about 20 millivolts. However, I'm getting no continuity between the amplifier outputs and the outputs of the actual amplifier. And that makes sense, does it? <laughs> I'm getting no continuity between the output and the output. I mean. So the output on the board, the actual output of the amplifier board and the actual outputs on the back of the amplifier. So I turn it on and off a few times, I'm not hearing a click and yeah, look down, see the relay's not clicking, here's a relay. You can, there's a suppression diode just on the back of the relay, you can see it's getting voltage across it when the protect light goes out, but it's not powering up. So. Yeah, anyway, I found a problem. I'm just going to macro in a minute. So, yeah, I was getting no continuity reading across the coil of the relay. So here's the relay. So this is the back of the solenoid coil. That's one of the connections to the solenoid coil. Here's the contacts. The So that's the normally closed side. And that's the normally open side. So it's got two sets of contacts, so they're running both stereo channels through this. And so, operation is dead simple really. Uh, DC is applied to this coil. It pulls in the armature, which is that bit that moves. So, that gets pulled in. When that actually gets pulled in, if you notice the... I don't really know if you'll get it all in. So the actual solenoid coil you can see it's got metal going round it well that's a ferrous metal that's magnetic when the relay when the pole piece actually pulls up against the armature pulls up against the pole piece in the armature in the um, solenoid coil it actually completes the magnetic circuit so you've got one side of the pole piece riveted Onto the onto the armature, and then it comes round and makes contact with the other part of the pole piece, <coughs> and that actually increases the amount of magnetic flux in that circuit. Uh, it's basically, it's a gapped core, then it's a closed core when they're together, uh, so that then conducts magnetic flux far better. It, once it pulls in, it pulls in tight. You could actually uh, some manufacturers do it on various appliances. You need the 24 volt sound this coil to pull it in or somewhere near but once it's actually pulled in and that is closed against the coil you can reduce the standing current in this core quite a lot and it will still stay pulled in but um, if you want a real good solid connection it, they're designed to run at 24 volts you let them run so anyway yeah the fault on this one is pretty easy to find so you can see that's one of them don't want to poke it up but that's one of the solenoid windings soldered on there if I spin it round you look at this one and it's, uh, it was never soldered in properly so a quick solder and she'll be good. Um, let me zoom out a moment. So here's the underside of the relay board where it connects to. So I've got a relay here out of one of those Gemini amps I fixed and you can see it's welded itself. It's in the open position so it wasn't making direct contact with the output however the reason it's welded is because 
there's 75 volts of DC on them rails when they blow. And what has happened is an arc, so the path to zero V is through the speaker. So as this relay is open because one of the rails is blowing, although the contact's down there and it goes out on this pin, an arc is struck and then once you get a plasma discharge it becomes very low impedance and it's maintained long enough for this contact to weld. And although it is welded in an open position, that arc has been maintained long enough to probably do some serious damage to that speaker and it's completely screwed this reel up. You cannot move that armature for want of trying. So that, you know, it was a single a single throw, single pole relay. It's basically got one normally open contact which closes when you energise a relay and that is it. This one has two contacts. So this is a dual throw. The throw means how many positions it works in. So this is dual throw and it's dual pole because it's got two separate lots of contacts. So this is a dual pole, dual throw relay. So when the amplifier is happy, it goes that way, pulls these two contacts together. So you can see that's off, that's on. It makes the connection between the output of the amplifier and the loudspeaker connections. Now, if you look on the board down here, you can see there's two unused connections there and there. Now, they keep wiring these up wrong. They keep wiring. So this one, look, these are where the speaker terminals connect to. Those are the unused connections. This is the solenoid connection and this is the armature connection. You can see that actually in the relay. You see, look, these two out ones here um, are the, where am I? I'm, I'm backwards here, right? Hang on. Uh, hang on. Right, yeah, sorry, uh, I don't know what, what order I just said. So these are the two unused. These are the outputs. These are the armature inputs, and those are the solenoid coil. So you can see on here, solenoid coil is there. The wire, so the next set of contacts that goes to the wire, and it's connecting to the armature. You can see it's connecting to these two contacts, which are always connected to the armature. This set of contacts here is these ones here, which go to the speaker, so they're connected when the relay pulls in. And this set is unused. Well, when you connect the armature up to the actual amplifier output board, it's always got power to it. So the normally closed contacts, if the relay opens, it connects to them. So if you earth them out, when the relay was open, you'd be connecting the output of the amplifier board to the zero V point on the board, and you'd be causing a short circuit between amplifier out and ground. So what you do is you connect the output of the amplifier to the armature. You connect the input of the amplifier to the normally open contacts, and you connect ground to um, the which way were I just said here? Sorry, yeah, you connect output to the output, not the amplifier, of the speaker connections. You connect the speaker connection, I'll do a drawing in a second. You connect speaker connections to the armature, you connect the amplifier output board to the normally open, and normally closed, you connect to ground. So what happens is, so the relay's in this position. Let's focus, so that's the relay in that position. The Output the amplifiers coming up through these contacts, through the armature, and actually to the output connections. If there's a fault, that happens. So you've disconnected the amplifier board. Although an arc will strike, instead of now going to the loudspeaker, it's shunted off to zero V rail. And it'll still fuse the relay, but it'll protect your loudspeaker because there's now a direct path to zero V instead of having to go through your speakers. And likewise, when you first apply power to the amp and the relay is open, well, here's your amplifier output here. It's just open circuit. Now it's connected again. So if they connected the amplifier board output to here instead of the armature, they can actually make use of this second set of contacts they're not using and use it for arc suppression. So let me draw that out in case you didn't quite follow what I'm saying. So this is how 
this one here is how the amplifier is currently connected. So here's the amplifier output. This is the armature, this is the contact that moves. So this is the normally closed when there's no power applied to the relay. I've not bothered drawing the solenoid coils in. So they've got that open circuit. So when power is applied to the solenoid, this terminal swings to the normally open contact. The amplifier output is then connected up to the speaker connections and to the speaker to zero V. Now in a fault condition, this relay opens. However, an arc is struck across here because there's such a high voltage. Now, the only place it can go to zero V is through here, through the loudspeaker winding, doing much damage on its way, and back to zero V until something like a rail fuse blows or the mains input blows or the arc extinguishes. Now, if, as you can see on that ever relay, that can take some time, enough to weld the contact on the relay. It's only a small gap. High voltage DC arc is easily maintained. <clears throat> if they made use of that normally closed contact and connected it this way, so instead of the armature of the relay, the, the contact that moves in and out being connected to the amp output, you connect the normally open contact of the relay to the amp output. So you can see it power up, the amplifier output isn't connected to zero V or anything. It's just open circuit, it's not, it's not being hurt at all. Once the amp stabilizes and the relay pulls in, the armature is connected to the speaker output. It swings across, connects to the normally open output, and the amplifier output can go through the speaker to zero V. Under a fault condition, when this relay opens, if an arc is struck, now because this normally closed contact is connected to zero V, although there's an arc here, instead of its path to zero V, like this one being through the speaker, its path to zero V is here, straight away, down through the board to zero V, it can arc all it wants, there's nothing going to go through the speaker to the zero V rail. Yeah, the relay may fuse, it doesn't matter, it's not damaging your speaker. They have the contacts on this relay to do it, but they've not bothered using them, and like I say, on the Genesis amplifier I fixed, it didn't even have it, it just basically had the amp output, it went, it was a single pole, single throw relay, one for each channel, terrible drawing that. Um, but yeah, basically this relay, it just clicks across through the speaker to zero V and that's it. So it just swings open, the arc maintains through the speaker again, fries the speaker. So I don't know why manufacturers of PA amplifiers don't seem to understand this, why they keep connecting, because if you keep connecting the armature to the amp output, like I said, you can't connect this normally closed connection to the zero V rail because if I connect this to zero V now as you can see before the relay is energized when I turn the amp on I've created a short circuit between the amp output and zero V and that's really not good especially at turn on if there's a like a swing to one rail or the other as the amp settles down it's full short output to zero V real bad but just simply rewiring the way you've connected the relay terminals solves that issue but hey they want to do it like that that's up to them, isn't it? It's going to keep damaging people's speakers. So, yeah, I'm going to resolder this relay up and put this amp back together. So if I turn it on now, if you watch a few contacts, just sort of at the edge of my screwdriver, you'll see that bit pulling towards, see the armature moving towards the contact. There we go. So that is the relay up and working again. So yeah, just one last thing to do is actually test the amplifier because I've not tested it yet. So again, if I turn it off, see it on, off, there we go. Yep, that's working. So let's try the um, copyright free YouTube audio. that working I shall um where is my dummy load so yes I shall <clears throat> get it hooked up to the uh, where are you where are you over here somewhere there we go right, get it hooked up to the dummy load and cook it for a while just make sure everything's happy in there 
that's not an idea. I'm going to have a probe of... I always like to see what rail voltages amps use. Uh, put it on top of fire a minute, it'll do. It's uh, just about in the shot. Uh, so... Minus 61, can you see that? And it cut out, so stupid YouTube audio library. Minus 61, plus 61, so plus 62. Plus minus 62 volts. A very small transform if I was going to size that. Maybe 300 VA, somewhere around. Then it doesn't have a... It doesn't have any more on it than just basic voltage ratings. But it's one of those, I should load her up. Get this heat sink nice and warm. See how she copes. But yeah, well, that's it. Uh, another one fixed. So cover on, clean it up, get it, uh, get it sent off to make some money on. Yeah, right. Thanks for watching. So you can see here, I'm um, just driving us into clipping. You can actually see it's sort of flat lining. It's at about the 60 volt point. So I can turn the second waveform on, yeah, both channels doing it, because whatever I'm listening to I've deliberately over crank the bass. See I'm just, the clip lights are just coming on, and see that is pumping out an appreciable amount of power because the aluminium block, so that's two 100 watt aluminium clad resistors, 8 ohm screw to a block of aluminium. The actual block of aluminium is our larger version of one of these. It's an older STA 700, uh, about 2008 model. Uh, yeah, that is actually kicking out some power. The, the vent from the fan coming out the side of it is getting quite toasty as well. She's, she's working hard. She's working well. Uh, yeah, so you can see it's just peaking on the clip lights. What you can't appreciate in here, from where you are, is, is the smell. It's the, those resistors are getting way overworked. I'm pumping a good couple of hundred watts into that heat sink to be getting to the temperature it's at. Um, yeah, it's just that, that hot metal smell. Some things, hmm, yes, if you know the smell, you know the smell, you know what I'm on about. But uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna, yeah, put the treble, if I turn the treble up on what I'm listening to, kind of makes it, you can see clipping a bit better uh, if you're looking at direct, I don't know how the camera's picking it up, it's sort of, you get more noise on the scope but you get a much broader flat line on it so I'm going to turn this down away from clipping, it's still working out pretty well, it's also going to save my um, dummy load from being fried somewhere, let's go with that yeah, look, no clip lights coming on there, just the occasional flicker on that one. Yeah, these I like these, on those Gemini amps, the clip lights come on way early. Um, way, way early. Yeah, I like, I like this. I love this. For what it is, this is actually kicking out some serious power. So, yeah, anyway, that's all. That's um, I'm going to leave this baking for an hour or two. I like to, if you fix them, I really like to work them hard for a bit just to make sure there's no intermittent thermal faults or something. So, yeah, just going to leave it baking. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.